Right guys, this is one of my rental properties. Um, I think this one's actually featured in another video I've done earlier. Uh, what we're going to be doing here is laying vinyl click flooring. Um, there was a horrible old laminate flooring as you can see there. Um, that's getting ripped up in the process of getting ripped up at the moment and we're going to be laying a light, a light oak grey quick step flooring. So we'll do that in here. So we've got the kitchen to do with the vinyl flooring and we also have the lounge. I'll go through here, excuse the mess, but the carpet's just been lifted, underlay's been lifted. And I've got to fight my way around all this stuff uh, to lay a grey oak laminate flooring. Which will go all around here, come through here and out to the vestibule here. And uh, there's new carpets getting fitted all the way upstairs. So the carpets will be grey. The lounge flooring will be a, a light grey oak and the kitchen flooring will be a light grey oak as well. So that's a quick overview of what we're going to do here. Right guys, that's the kitchen finished. I was going to do a how-to video but I just, I'm running out of time here. Um, the, the tenants are back in a couple of days time and I've got about 16 packs of laminate to lay in the, in the living room. Uh, so. Here's the finished kitchen floor. It's turned out good. This is living quick step vinyl quick flooring. Which if you've seen any of my other videos, I tend to use this quite a lot. Um, it's good. It's guaranteed for 20 years, so it's ideal for a for a rental property. Um, there's not much to say really. Uh, there was a mat well here, so it was a bit of a pain. So pretty much what I've done, I just floored right over the top of it, got a jigsaw and just cut it out. Um, I need to, I've got to put chrome trim on here just to finish it off. And I've got a couple of radiator pipes to finish off in there. So a little bit of silicon and I'll put chrome covers on there. Right guys, just a quick one, uh, just to show you a product that I use when I'm, you know, when you're cutting down radiators, when you're doing laminate flooring or vinyl flooring. You can see the hole, I usually normally put the join on the pipe and cut the hole. Although that's a mile off, but it doesn't matter, it's quite covered, but. Pretty much, once you've done that, it looks a bit rough, and I'm sure you'll agree. So what I use is the, the pipe collars, which are these. So they simply slip down over the joint. So here's the collars, which is that. And then you get the pipe covers from the same company. They're called Snap It, uh, Talon Snap It covers. So they're pretty much chrome covers, just, just snap onto the, the copper pipe. So you just push them on. What that does, it just gives you a nice neat finish, you know, covers the chrome, covers the dodgy hole I just cut on the floor in as you saw, uh, but it just gives it a nice neat finish. Uh, I will leave links in the description to these and probably most of the tools and things I'm using in the video, so if anybody's interested in what I'm using, uh, just have a look in the description and I'll list everything there as usual. Yeah, so that's it. Pretty much done in here, as I said, just the, the trim around the mat well. I've purposefully left a strip out of the door here. I've kept it a little bit shorter, the door. I might need to put a thin strip in there once I get the threshold in. I just want to see how the laminate sort of meets into the floor in, so I've just left that. So, that's it. The big issue in here with doing furnished houses is try to floor under the fridge freezer, the appliances and stuff, so you've got to move them out, floor it, move them back without damaging the floor, you know, things like that. Now I've got this whole living room to do with all this, you know, the furniture, so. Okay, so I'm just preparing to lay the laminate floor in here. A couple of things. Obviously one of the most important things when you're laminate flooring is preparation. So this, the whole floor has got these little staples sticking up. You know where the underlay was, so first job really is to pull all those out. Um, or set of pliers, so I'll get all those pulled out. Right, for taking staples out, I use these, the Nipex Carpenter's Pincers. It's the best tool for the job. So I just grip the staple, rock the pliers, pulls them out no problem. Again, rock the pliers, pull them out. Soul destroying, I must have hundreds of these to do. <laughs> but needs must, you have to do it. Uh, I'm just noticing as well, I was going to take all the skirting boards off as I would normally do. Because this is a rental property, I'm not 
overly first with the, the finish. Um, if you can see, if I take the skirting boards off, you can see they've been painted down to where the carpet was. The old carpet's stuck on, so it would mean having to prepare, you know, paint all the skirting boards, get them back on, repair all the the finish. So what I'm, I'm just going to use Scotia trim here, which I don't really like doing, um, but for speed, I am up against it time-wise, so uh, I don't want to be having to prepare all the, the skirting board and stuff, so uh, I'm going to use a grey oak Scotia trim just to go around and cover all that, save me a bit of time. So I'll get to it, I'll get all these staples up, get the whole floor hoovered, get the underlay down and I'll start laying the floor in. I'm going to come this way, so start in the top left corner, work my way back. Okay, so that's the bit I just ripped there. You just saw the ripping with the track saw. As I said, there's obviously a new carpet going down here, so that'll, once the new carpet goes down, it'll fit onto the gripper like that and gives you a sort of seamless finish. So I'll just leave, I'll leave this sort of loose until the carpet fitters come in, but the gripper's still there. And the laminate's just slipped under the, the gripper. That's it. You can see you're leaving roughly a 5mm gap all the way around. This is where the Scotia beading will go. Uh, for little bits like this, I might just fill with silicon, we'll see. Something just gives you a neater finish. You know, just round these sort of bits and run the scotia into the, the side here. We'll see, we'll, we'll play it by ear. But that's what we're up to. I'm just going to finish this area now and then that'll take us into the vegetable there. Right, not meaning to teach anybody to suck eggs here, but for anybody that's new to laminate flooring, when you, when you get a bit like this, a bit that needs to be cut, what you do is you get your board, spin it around the opposite way, so turn it around back to front if you like. So if you see this edge, the big edge on this board, that laid along there, put the big edge at the opposite side. Turn your board round, set the gap, roughly 5mm, and then mark your edge here, like this. We'll cut that in the guillotine, spin the board round and you should get the perfect fit. Okay, so that's that board we just marked. I've just placed it in the guillotine. You'll see I've marked there. Just put it roughly in the middle of this groove here. Pull the guillotine down and then cut it. That's it, cut. Carry it around here. Place it in, give it a hit. That's it. And then you can see it leaves you with a perfect 5mm gap. So that's how you measure and cut a board without using an actual tape measure. Right, this is where the track saw comes into its own. I've obviously got these narrow rip cuts. You can see down the edge of the skirting there. So every board is going to have to be cut roughly a third in width. So we'll do all that with the track saw. We'll go on to that now. That will then take us into the vestibule, which is the last part of the job. I'll clear all that out, get the underlay down. Right guys, I'm pretty much finished the floor now, so this is the kitchen. Which now leads through to the lounge. I'm just in the process, well, fitted the threshold yesterday. I'm just waiting for the adhesive to go off. Which is this stuff, but unfortunately it leaves a residue on the floor, uh, which I knew. Um, so along here you'll get a residue when you when you clamp that down and um, what I use to get that off is multi-solve a really good product that so if you ever get silicon or residue just such as this type of job here uh, just spray it with that and it just wipes off perfectly so that's the threshold it steps up slightly because the laminate's a lot thicker than the vinyl flooring but that's fine and here's the flooring It's quite difficult to show you because of the sofas, but got all floored. 
as I said, this carpet's getting changed next week on Thursday for a grey carpet, so it should just the colour scheme will flow throughout. Okay, so the floor now flows. So this is the whole lounge area. And it now flows through to the vestibule area here as well. I will be getting a new mat for the mat well. And we've cut this out, so we'll probably get a black or a grey mat uh, to match. That one's seen better days. So we'll get that out, get a new mat in there. The only thing that's left to do in here is the Scotia trim, which is not coming in until this afternoon, so I'm not going to be able to do it today. I'm going to have to do it tomorrow. And I don't know if I'll be able to film that because the tenants are actually back today. So I don't really want to be filming when they're when they're in the house, unless they pop out. But pretty much, let's be putting the, the Scotia trim if you can see around all the edge of the floor, and we've left a 5mm gap. So all the trim does is basically cover that gap. Um, so we just pin it onto the skirting board, and it just creates a, a nice transition. Now the trim I've went for is just a grey oak as well. So we'll just take that right around the room. Small bits like this, I'll just use a grey silicon. Silicon seal along there, just gives a neater finish, I think. So we're under the door. Um, and the stairs. And this bit here, I'll just probably just silicon that. Put the Scotia trim in here. It'll turn out neat enough. You probably remember when I first started doing this video, I originally started laying the floor this way. Uh, but I got about three or four boards out, took a measurement, stupidly, afterwards. Um, and the walls are way out in this property. So the reason that I ran them this way is because it's just a bit of planning actually. You just come in the front door here. If you walk along here, looking into the kitchen, the first thing you're going to see is the line of the boards running that way. Now these, this wall being off and me starting over there, I think this would have, you know, it would have ended up sort of kinked way off and it would just catch your eye straight away. So hence the reason why I changed the position of the boards. Um, it's just a cosmetic thing really, you just, ideally you would want that, you know, running perfectly level with that wall. Another way I could have got around that, I could have started from this wall actually and, and worked back. Then it would mean fitting, you know, boards in the reverse that way, which can be a pain sometimes. So, easiest solution for me, starting that top corner just work all the way back, it's worked out fine. Just in case you are wondering why the boards ended up going this way. <laughs> just a view from the opposite side of the living room. Alright guys, that's pretty much it. So we'll floor in our rental property. Um, not too much of a how-to, but it just shows you the type of thing I get up to again. So again, guys, if you liked the video, please give it a like. That would be great. We thumbs up there would be fantastic. If you like these types of videos about rental properties, DIY, construction projects, uh, please subscribe to the channel by clicking there. And feel free to watch any of my other videos, which would be hugely appreciated as well. Right, guys, thank you. Cheers.